Monday, October 9th, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Uh, today, we're going to look at the bond market. Is it safe to go back into gilt <laughs> and bonds in general? Well, the IMF uh, seems to think the ECB uh, could lose a, a trillion euros from unwinding its bond portfolio. Uh, that it uh, accumulated through QE. That's what they do. They print uh, reserves or money out of thin air and buy, they buy these bonds, basically a massive hedge fund. <laughs> they become the central banks. So we're going to look at that today. Before we move into that, just some of the headlines and some of my, uh, yeah, my opinion on what's going on between Israel and uh, the Palestinians. So, yeah, that conflict's still ongoing, unfortunately. As I said in my live stream last, last night, my hope is that it ends quickly and there's uh, some kind of peace <laughs> between the two parties, even though uh, that's um, at, the, at this juncture is very difficult to imagine. Uh, but I think the most important thing to keep an eye on vis-a-vis uh, -vis this uh, war is the reaction from, like, the uh, other Middle Eastern countries, the oil producing countries and uh, natural gas producing countries, the Muslim countries, North African countries, and even Russian, Russia and China, and the reaction from the West. I think it's going to be very different. Uh, I saw a comment from the Turkish President Erdogan yesterday. He was very adamant that uh, they're going <laughs> to back the Palestinians till the end. So that seems a little bit belligerent. Uh, uh, I'm not like judging that. I'm just uh, trying to observe. So uh, that's why I think it's a dangerous uh, conflict that could spread. And that, of course, would uh, affect the whole world. It, it, it could make uh, the uh, Ukraine war look uh, a little bit like a localized event. So the other uh, thing I wanted to report on is Metro Bank. Metro Bank, for now, <laughs> has survived, but I'm not too sure it's a great uh, thing that's going on there. We, we've got the biggest uh, shareholder in Metro Bank. He's just pumped in uh, another 105 million pounds. Uh, they've raised some uh, debt, uh, some, some money through debt. Uh, and... Uh, why, why do I say it's not so great, in my opinion, even though they're, they're going to keep going? Well, because JP Morgan, HSBC, two of the biggest banks in the world, they had a look at um, Metro Bank. I think the Bank of England asked them to consider buying it, and they said no. And uh, so I, I don't think that's a, a good thing. It's still not, not out of the woods and I'm not sure it will ever get out of the woods. So I think it's a dangerous situation personally. But anyway, uh, back to, to bonds. And of course, we're going to look at the markets afterwards. Well, as I've said many times, bonds were in the bull market from uh, 1981. And I think the, the end was around 2020, 2021, a 40-year bull market. What that meant is that the cost of uh, borrowing, the cost of credit went down for 40 years. <laughs> and that's why we've had such easy money uh, and uh, people have borrowed so much. That's why asset prices, financial prices of paper assets have gone up so much. And, and of course, that was the trend because we had a a bear market in bonds from 1941 to 1981. But I think in the last 15, 20 years, or even 25 years, the central bankers have taken advantage of this trend and they artificially uh, decreased the levels uh, of interest rates and therefore of bond yields. Uh, they, they've done that through uh, basically printing money, or if you want to call it reserves, out of thin air, going into the bond markets and buying ma massive amounts uh, of government bonds. And, and it, it just uh, snowballed into a, a, a huge bubble, not just in the bond market, in the stock market, and a, a lot of other things. 
Uh, some people call it the everything bubble. And I think uh, a lot of the um, fund managers out there, people who are professional, who are supposed to manage uh, your retirement money or whatever else, uh, they're too uh, myopic. They, 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 they only look at the tree and not the forest. And uh, of course, they have an agenda or not an agenda It's their job. If they, they're running a bond fund, they, they need to stay in bonds. And a, a lot of regulatory, uh, how can I say, policy uh, is for uh, funds to have bonds because they're supposed to be really safe. Yeah, they might have been safe for 40 years. So and that's why I, I think... Uh, yeah, it's a dangerous time for bonds <laughs> and bonds are a really important part of the fiat currency system, especially government bonds. They're what back the, the whole system. So um, I said uh, earlier, is it safe to go back into bonds? Well, uh, a lot of the uh, bond fund fund managers and the professionals that are in charge of your, uh, your uh, retirement funds, uh, they're heavily regulated. Uh, they're told uh, by the regulators where to put some of their funds, you know, such a per percentage into government bonds. They're supposed to be safe, but they have been anything but safe in, in the last 18 months to two years, I, I would say. Uh, of course, the regulators don't don't tell uh, fund managers to, to put uh, any of your money into physical gold or silver. Well, First of all, because they think it's risky. Second of all, because physical gold and silver are not considered to be financial assets. So um, they might be able to sip it, but it's not the same. So this is an article here I saw from yesterday. Retirement giant, uh, giant backs UK guilt amid bond market route. Phoenix Group moves money into government debt amid confidence and in interest rate peak. The UK uh, biggest uh, long-term savings and retirement business has started uh, buying gilts for the first time in two years, despite a renewed uh, bout of bond market turmoil. Phoenix Group, which manages $269 billion on behalf of 12 million customers, said it now believed gilts offered good value relative to other assets and had started moving money into British government debt. Well, I can tell you when someone like that says good value relative to other assets. And I worked in the city and uh, we did uh, we did a lot of trades for clients like that relative value. And it doesn't mean that uh, guilts are going to do well <laughs> in real terms. It means it's going to do well other uh, against other assets. And sometimes in the um, investment world, especially like pension fund management, uh, people are happy if they lose 2% <laughs> while their competitors who manage the same kind of fund loses 4%. They think they've done really well, but... <laughs> They might have done well in terms of performance against their peers, but they haven't done well for you. So I, I think that's a big problem. So, uh, and there are others. It's not just the Phoenix uh, Phoenix uh, group that's going into uh, guilds or government bonds. Uh, I mean, they did sell them uh, in the last two years because they thought the Bank of England was not uh, moving quick enough against inflation. But they all seem to think now that um, interest rates have peaked, and I'm not too sure about that. We, we've had the biggest uh, orgy <laughs> of credit, uh, money and credit and borrowing and government spending uh, that I've ever seen, <laughs> you know, in the last uh, 15 years, ever since the 08 crisis. And do you think that uh, raising rates just to 5% is really going to kill off that inflationary, you know, tsunami. And that's not even talking about what happened in March 2020 uh, during the lockdowns when they basically doubled the amount of QE that had been done uh, since 2009. 
in, in like a, a matter of months. So, of course, this is what they focus on, government bonds. And uh, I think it's too early or I, I think uh, right now it's not the place to be, but that's where they're supposed to put your money. So, uh, and at the same time, you've got the IMF warning now that uh, the ECB, uh, and this, of course, is uh, would happen if they try to liquidate their whole portfolio of bonds at once, which they wouldn't, of course. But it just goes to show you the problem uh, that uh, people holding bonds have right now. Uh, this uh, another article here from the Telegraph. This is from. Uh, yesterday, uh, it says Europe's money printing spree risks ending in bailouts, analyst warns. <laughs> and that's the taxpayer again, they're bailing, bailing people out. And that towards the end of the article, it says the IMF noted that if all the ECB's QE stockpile were sold at once, it would result in, in losses of 1 trillion euros uh, to the euro system at current market prices. <laughs> wow. Wiping out all the buffers in place to absorb losses. The IMF stressed the figure reflected in an accounting exercise rather than their reality, the reality facing Europe. But what's interesting is that the, at current prices, they've got a trillion in, in losses. So can you imagine um, if bond yields continue to rise and, and central banks don't have very good control of bond yields. They, they can control more the short-term rates. So, um, yes, there's, there's still danger out there. And just before we go into the markets, as I said earlier, uh, pension fund managers won't tell you to buy physical gold and silver and hold it outside the system because that means they're not going to get your business. But if you are looking to do it, uh, I just heard from... Uh, Oliver at Gold Investments, who I've worked with for quite a few years now. He's my affiliate in the UK. He still got 5% off the uh, price of various dates, gold sovereigns. And uh, with what's going on now in the Middle East, uh, I'm not sure how long that will last. So you might want to check that out. All the details are below in the description. And for my viewers in, in the US, uh, I've got uh, an affiliation with ITM Trading, who I highly recommend. And I also, uh, I'm affiliated with Miles Franklin, who I highly recommend as well. Both of those are below in the description of this video as well. So today is Columbus Day, so it's a federal holiday in the U.S. So I think the markets are going to be very quiet. But we've seen some moves in the markets overnight, of course. Uh, by the way, it's 7.34 a.m. London time. Rudy and I are a bit earlier today. Uh, so most of you probably want to know where gold is. Well, gold is trading at 18.51. It's up about $19. Uh, not surprising, of course. The high has been 56. And the low has been 32. So we're up about a percent. Uh, silver is up about a percent as well as trading at 2182. It has been as high as 2203. So uh, I think what's going on now is pretty tame in terms of volatility and moves. Uh, but uh, I think we might need to have to wait until tomorrow when the U.S. comes in after this federal holiday. And uh, it's interesting that this all kicked off <laughs> on Saturday and uh, the people that can, you know, manage things, they, they've got a bit of time and they've got access to the futures market to try to manage perception. But uh, I, I think it's still going to be a very uh, turbulent and volatile week in terms of, uh, of the markets. Well, the Dow futures is down 163 points. 32, 33 to 40. Uh, it has been down as much as 260 points. So about a percent, just under a percent as well. Uh, the NASDAQ is down 83, uh, trading at 14,890. Uh, it's been down as much as 130. 
And the S&P 500 is down 25 at 4283. It's been down as far as 4269. So all fairly quiet there. Uh, to the currencies, we got sterling down a third, uh, euro down about 0.4. So the dollar has rallied a little bit here. Um, the uh, the dollar is down though uh, versus the U1. Uh, it's below uh, 730 now. It's down a quarter of a percent. What about oil? <laughs> well, let's look at oil. What has oil done? Um, well, WTI crude right now is a uh, two dollars eighty, up two dollars eighty, up three point four percent. It has been higher. I, I think the high is around just above eighty six. So, I mean, last week we, we dropped from 90 to around 80. That was around the low last week. So now we're back to the middle of the range. Uh, again, I think uh, we need to wait and see how things evolve and when the U.S. comes back uh, from the holiday. Uh, Brent is also up over 3%, trading at 86.85. And natural gas as well. Natural gas has been rising uh, the last few days, uh, and uh, it continues. It's up 3.4% uh, at 355. What about copper? Uh, high grade copper is up 1.2% at 300 and, uh, 368, excuse me, and platinum is up 10 bucks, trading around 890, up 1%. So I, I would say, yeah, things are fairly steady at the moment mainly because there's a holiday in the U.S. And uh, yeah, I don't think uh, treasuries are trading uh, overnight. They might trade later on, but uh, being a federal holiday, I don't think they will. Uh, so we'll have to wait till tomorrow uh, to look at this. And uh, just an announcement before I conclude talking about looking at it tomorrow. It might be a bit later than, than usual, uh, my update tomorrow, because I'm going away <laughs> uh, on a golf holiday with uh, my nephew and a friend of his. So I'm going to be away for a while, but uh, I will be updating you from there, from where I'm going to. I'll leave it uh, for now to tell you where it is. You will see, hopefully, when I uh, update you. And uh, yeah, with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.